you talked about the power of exclusivity. Yes. For those who are tuning in, what is the power of exclusivity? Whenever you, whatever, remember I said, everything's connected. I believe in everything having an anchor, right? And if your anchor, your, your main anchor is love, everything branches out of a tree of love. Exclusivity is the natural progression of whatever it is that you do. For example, you do video, you do photography. Once you get good at it and you have enough people paying you, you're going to have a choice of who do you want to take pictures for. Right. Right. And then some people make the choice on how much the price is, um, what the project is. And then you only do like orangutan is like a big inspiration of mine. And he only does like beautiful women, right? Half naked. It's a horrible job. And I just, (laughs) I don't want to put that out in the universe to do it. Right. But once you get good enough at it and your price point doesn't matter, Mm -hmm. you know, whenever, whenever you're great at something, it doesn't matter what your price is. Right. You know, do you guys follow on that so far? So whenever you get to that sweet spot, when you're doing what you love and your price point doesn't matter. The money is irrelevant Mm -hmm. um, because people are going to pay for the service because they value it that much. Right. You have to trim down who you're actually seeing, because now if you're available to everyone, your demand goes down because you're like, oh, if I don't catch them now, I'll catch them in a week. Right. Or two weeks. Right. So the natural progression is being exclusive and closing the doors to everybody that's not in your target audience so the power of exclusivity is that who do you who are you networking with who are you working with in your target audience so for me that was able to open up every other door because i am cutting ceos i'm cutting entrepreneurs i'm cutting athletes i'm cutting owners i'm cutting you know billionaires i'm cutting every every walk of life in my target audience so they're able to open up different doors so that's the power that i say that's in exclusivity when you have that targeted audience and you're really only one after another doing people seeing people that are gonna help you push you along or you can help them but it's a mutual collaboration now right and it's also um you you have to have that demand right like you have to people have to want to work with you on that level because if you 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 can say you're exclusive like kind of like you said on your podcast you can be exclusive all you want but if nobody's coming and hiring you then you're not working you're not doing anything right so the 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 exclusivity a lot of people want to do it but it it falls down on your demand no demand no exclusivity yep so you definitely have to build your clientele and everything and then y'all hear that and then you can be exclusive exclusive that's when i say the natural evolution you have to go like step one (laughs) two you know what about what would you say to somebody who, who says well you know what i've been doing this for so long and i feel like my i feel like my work is x price or i shouldn't go below that price like i'm a barber and i feel like i shouldn't charge less than 50 bucks a haircut because i'm that good and i'm that intrinsic into it that depends because now you're getting into um opinions of people and you have to still be worth that price even if you think you're worth you have to be worth tangibly Mm -hmm. so you can have the skill set and i know barbers my brother-in-law the skill set to be a hundred dollar a haircut barber but it's the value there for you to be a hundred dollar haircut barber or fifty dollars so not only um it's a weird notion but the haircut becomes irrelevant right because what are you bringing to the table besides cutting your hair or getting your hair cut i would say is the experience right the experience um and we're very key on that um and with the experience there's no shortcuts so the razors that we use are the best the the tools that we use are the best you know and all that costs money but what is it that i'm bringing to you of value in that hour that i'm seeing you right so what if you have a problem with your business and i'm able to fix that salute that business for you you're getting a haircut but i found a solution for your business or your life how much is that our worth now right how much was that problem going to cost you to get fixed right you know or hey you sit in my chair and i need this video done and i can't find somebody that's going to fix that's going to do the quality or the look that i want i'll say no more i have you know three people that you can pick from and depending on what you want this is i'm fixing a problem i'm showing my value i'm showing my worth Mm -hmm. yeah so the haircut yes you have to be I, i always say there's 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 only one line and 
the people that have done it for longer kind of like blur that line. And I'm very controversial for this. And in, in any field, you've been doing it for 10 years. You've been doing it for two years. Your skill sets are the same. Mm -hmm. Just imagine, right? And I've been doing it for five years. But because my value is higher, I'm able to charge more. For example, I'm putting this in the, in the situation. Um, you're going to feel some type of way because you've been doing it longer. And you're going to look at it like, oh, um, you're going to go behind him and say, yeah, he's been doing it longer. He should do it. Right. But instead of creating your own value, where I say the skill set, the barbering almost becomes irrelevant. The skill set, because this is the line. And in a fade, you either erase the line or you don't erase it. There's no the only difference is how well do you get along with the person that's fading the line? How well do you like get along with the person that's taking the picture? And how how fast is it? Do I have to wait, you know, a month for my pictures or do I have it in a, excuse me, in a week? Right. So once you're a barber, once you have a certain skill set, you erase the line. That's it. There's no magic after that because I cannot erase the line more than you erased it. Right. You get that concept. So a lot of people get drawn out in the fact I am a better hair cutter. Great. Go on and be the best. Would, would, would you agree with the notion that that the, the client who appreciates and is willing to pay that higher price for your work would appreciate on, on another level to where a low paying client wouldn't? Like, for example, let's say I'm booking a wedding. Oops. <laughs> let's say I'm booking a wedding and my packages start at four thousand dollars. Well, the bride goes, yeah, but I can get somebody to do it for three hundred. You know, um, if if I if I if I do the photography for three hundred versus doing it for three thousand, the client that pays the three hundred dollar price ticket is more likely to come back and say, well, you know, I paid three hundred. Um, I should have gotten this. I should have gotten that. Where is this missing? They're they're more picky about everything that they get versus the client who pays out the three or four thousand dollars, and they're maybe they maybe necessarily. They don't look at the, the uh, at those sorts of details, or those details are not as important because they know the kind of work that they got. So, so I I'm a firm believer that the problem is not the client, it's you. Mm -hmm. Why are you giving your prices to somebody that's clearly not in your targeted audience? Boom. If you mm. erase that step, then you're gonna have that problem. But before I give any, like I get it all the time. They're like, oh, let me get a card. I would love to come for you for a haircut. And I'm like, I don't have any cards. They're like, okay, cool. How can I get in contact with you? I'm like, oh, I do everything online. Here's my Instagram, you know, and you can book from there. This is my booking link, you know, all this stuff. I'm, I'm doing that on purpose so I can know if you're in my targeted audience. I need to know more about you to be able to understand if you can afford the prices that I'm going at. Right. Because if I start from the beginning and I just pitch everybody, I'm going to get a lot more no's than I am. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if I get to know you and I understand you're in the targeted audience. So it's almost like you're instead of you trying to sell yourself to your client, you have you're getting yourself. the client to sell themselves on the idea that, that they're they're trying to sell themselves to you. Now, that's the power of exclusivity. I want you to want to get a haircut from me. Right because of the value instead of he cuts so-and-so or he does this, he does that, then it's a different story, you know? Mm -hmm. So do you have like something online or something like, cause like for the wedding thing, you can like create a form mm -hmm. and then you could be like, these are the things you want. This is how much it will cost. You know what I mean? And then that client can be like, no, I don't want that. But then this is the other thing. It's, you know, um, price is very tricky when you're, when, you know, I went to school for marketing. When you use price for marketing, it can go either really good or really bad. I don't I don't think there's a gray area. For example, when you go and buy, if you go and buy a Lamborghini, you're assuming you're going to be paying over an X amount of money mm -hmm. because of the exclusivity, right? Of driving the Lamborghini. Okay. But when you go and buy a Honda, now you're able to negotiate on the price. Right. You're able to bargain it down. So that's a perfect example. That not, is a really good example. Not one car is better than the other, mm -hmm. um, depending on what you're using it for. But if I'm going and if I'm using the car to get from point A to point B, one car is not better than the other. Right. Because there's still speed limits on the road. If I'm going to take the car, I'm going to probably take it the same way to get it to work. So one car doesn't get me to point A any different than 
the other car. Right. They're both going to do the same thing at the end of the day. But it now, just depends. Um, so now the tool of what you're using it and the exclusivity of it is I want to pull up to this club and I want people to know that I'm affluent. So now are you going to pull up in a Honda Civic or are you going to pull up in a right. Lambo? So it's a difference, right? So a lot of people misconstrue what the point is of what you're doing it and 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 it gets lost in translation so a lot of people's like better or worse the same thing with barbering i'm better than this person i'm the best barber in town i'm the best photographer in town and what ends up happening is you're putting yourself in your own you're putting yourself in a lane that has a limit Mm -hmm. because once you're the best at something you're going to come down so then you know it ties back to the power of exclusivity of you using that to actually build who you are Mm -hmm. now if you're a photographer if you're a videographer and you're putting your wedding packages on there you're immediately closing yourself off to people that can't afford it and people that might be able to afford it but don't know they want to spend that much right and that's that's a really good area to be in people that can't afford it but don't know that they can't that that don't think that they should be spending that much whereas if you're showcasing them your work and then they're like i want this guy it doesn't matter what it costs you convince them instead of kind of like throwing them off with a price 